Step into the shimmering portal of memory, where time folds upon itself, and let's take a journey back to the thrilling cosmos of 1980. There it was, a television series that burst forth like a comet, leaving its trail of awe and wonder across the minds of its audience. Galactica 1980, the embodiment of futuristic dreams, unfurled its narrative tapestry, inviting you to witness a blend of technology and human spirit that dared to bridge the gap between stars and souls. Can you still recall that first encounter, the sensation of anticipation mingled with the electric hum of the screen? Perhaps it was the riveting suspense or the characters who felt like old friends even in the face of alien worlds. Every episode was a ticket to the stars, a pilgrimage through the cosmos, and a testament to the human spirit's unyielding tenacity. It's as if the show ignited a beacon within, urging us to dream beyond our terrestrial limits. And oh, the moments that linger like stardust in the memory. The heart-pounding pursuits through the galaxies, the delicate dance between humanity and the unknown, and the moments of sheer brilliance that lit up the screen. Those flashes of brilliance, those unforgettable instances that made your heart race, and your imagination soar, they are etched in time like constellations. But now, let's pull back the cosmic curtain and unveil some hidden stars about the show. Behind the scenes, under the shimmering guise of fiction, lay tidbits that add a deeper layer to the saga. These random facts, like meteorites from the past, hold a charm of their own. They bring us closer to the creator's intentions, the challenges they faced, and the magic they wove into the fabric of Galactica 1980. So there you have it, a glimpse into the cosmic symphony that was Galactica 1980. As we journeyed through its starlit corridors, we encountered more than just a show, we encountered a piece of our own history, a testament to the timeless quest for exploration and connection. So go ahead, let your mind wander to those celestial memories, and let the echoes of that bygone era stir your imagination once again. And once again, in one spectacular destruction, ingenious budget-strapped sequences in Galactica 1980 in the realm of budget-conscious television production, Galactica 1980 stands as a testament to creative resourcefulness. One standout moment emerges from a sequence depicting the Cylon's assault on Earth. Faced with financial constraints, the show's producers ingeniously repurposed footage from the film Earthquake. By deftly superimposing Cylon fighters into scenes of disaster, they conjured a visually spectacular sequence that belied its humble origins. The brilliance of this approach lay in its cost-effectiveness. The explosive destruction that unfolded on screen was masterfully composed using existing footage. Cylon fighters firing upon iconic landmarks seemed remarkably realistic, all while adhering to the show's modest budget. The synergy of repurposed visuals and original content culminated in an unforgettable spectacle that captivated audiences without draining the production's financial reservoirs. Galactica 1980's creative reimagining of resources extended beyond the screen. The show's cast interwove its legacy with that of its predecessor, Battlestar Galactica. James Patrick Stewart, who graced the screen as a member of the Galactica 1980 ensemble, would later grace the soap opera landscape as Valentin Cassidine on General Hospital. A connection more profound than mere coincidence, Stewart's on-screen father in Battlestar Galactica, John Colicos, portrayed Mikos Cassidine, a character whose familial thread Stewart continued to weave in the soap opera realm. However, not all aspects of Galactica 1980 boasted seamless execution. Lorne Green, known for his authoritative portrayal of Commander Adama, bore an unfortunate burden, a conspicuously artificial beard. Throughout his appearances in the series, Green donned a fake beard that often left audiences raising quizzical eyebrows. The attempts to uphold continuity inadvertently led to a distracting visual element that occasionally detracted from the gravitas of his performance. In hindsight, Galactica 1980's legacy is one of innovation within constraints, a tapestry woven from the disparate threads of recycled footage, interconnected casting choices, and, unfortunately, an all-too-obvious beard. As the show navigated the labyrinthine realm of science fiction television, it left an indelible mark on the genre's history, showcasing that even in the face of limitations, creativity knows no bounds. In the realm of television history, the 1980 series Galactica 1980 embarked on a turbulent journey of creation and transformation, leaving an indelible mark on the science fiction landscape. Originally envisioned as a continuation of its predecessor, the show was set to feature beloved characters Apollo, Starbuck, and Balter. 
However, budgetary constraints led to the exclusion of several key figures, including Apollo and Starbuck, reshaping the narrative's course. The unavailability of Dirk Benedict and Richard Hatch's refusal to reprise their roles prompted a radical shift. Out of necessity emerged innovation, Apollo and Starbuck were reborn as Troy and Dylan, portrayed by Kent McCord and Barry Van Dyke. Their uncanny resemblance to their predecessors helped solidify their place in this reimagination. To fill the void left by Balter, the cunning commander Zavire emerged as a regular adversary, adding depth and tension to the storylines. While the original concept involved Commander Zavire tampering with Earth's timeline, and the dynamic duo of Troy and Dylan racing to thwart him, this idea eventually fell by the wayside. Yet, this discarded notion planted a seed that would later sprout into something remarkable. The concept's remnants inspired none other than producer Donald P. Belisario, ultimately leading to the creation of the iconic series Quantum Leap. Beyond character transformations and temporal conundrums, the show's unique vehicular creations became an emblem of its ingenuity. The sleek turbocycles, fashioned from modified 1979 Yamaha MX-175 motorcycles, darted across the screen, leaving an indelible image. Astonishingly, only two of these modified marvels were crafted, their scarcity amplifying their mystique. Plans for a half-turbocycle, suspended from a helicopter for a realistic takeoff, remained tantalizingly incomplete as filming commenced. Such is the tale of Galactica 1980, a series that weathered budgetary storms to reinvent itself, sparking inspiration far beyond its original trajectory. The remnants of its discarded ideas went on to shape the landscape of science fiction television. In a world where creation and adaptation intertwine, the legacy of Galactica 1980 endures as a testament to the power of innovation. 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 Galactica 1980, a short-lived odyssey in the skies and a bold attempt to recapture the galactic magic of its predecessor, Battlestar Galactica. The television landscape introduced Galactica 1980 in the spring of 1980. A spin-off that transported viewers 30 years into the future, the series aimed to continue the interstellar journey of the colonial survivors, but the stars did not align as expected. The show marked a reunion of sorts, as Lorne Green and Herbert Jefferson, Jr. reprised their roles from Battlestar Galactica as Commander Adama and Colonel Boomer, respectively. These familiar faces provided a bridge between the two narratives, offering a sense of continuity amidst the time jump. However, the series encountered turbulence early on. Critics and fans alike were left unimpressed by the storyline's shift from epic space battles to a more earthbound focus, attempting to blend science fiction with historical intrigue. The departure from the grandeur of the original series was met with disappointment, leaving many yearning for the intergalactic battles and dazzling visuals that had defined its predecessor. The show's struggles were reflected in its ratings, which fell short of expectations. As the 10th episode aired, it was evident that the new direction had failed to captivate audiences. In a last-ditch effort to reignite interest, the producers made a bold move. They brought back Dirk Benedict as the charismatic Starbuck for the final episode. Alas, this gambit was insufficient to salvage the series from its downward trajectory. Galactica 1980 was subsequently cancelled leaving its journey cut short at just 10 episodes. The attempt to reinvigorate the beloved universe proved challenging, as fans' expectations clashed with the new direction. The cancellation marked a sobering conclusion to the saga, a reminder that not all journeys among the stars are destined to find their place in the firmament of television history. As the years have passed, Galactica 1980 remains a brief, but intriguing footnote in the annals of science fiction television, serving as a reminder that even the most esteemed franchises can falter when attempting to redefine themselves. It stands as a testament to the delicate balance between honoring the past and charting new territories, a cautionary tale in the ever-evolving realm of televised storytelling. The Return of Starbuck, the final episode of the 1980 TV series Galactica 1980, stands as a rare bright spot in a show that otherwise languished in the shadows of its predecessor's success. Despite the series facing a tidal wave of negative reception, this episode managed to capture the hearts of fans and has secured its place as the sole redeeming installment in the eyes of many. The curious success of The Return of Starbuck lies not only in its plot, but in its reception. As the last hurrah of the ill-fated series, it saw the return of beloved character Starbuck from the original Battlestar Galactica. 
This nostalgic nod to the past helped mend some of the rifts between the show and its disappointed audience. Critics and viewers alike found themselves captivated by the blend of familiarity and innovation that the episode offered. A dash of original series magic coupled with fresh storytelling brought a taste of what could have been if the show had strayed less from its source material. Interestingly, the familial connection to the series' production runs deeper than one might expect. Some of the young actors portraying the Super Scouts were none other than the real-life offspring of Glenna Larson, the series' creator and producer. This personal touch lent an air of authenticity to their performances and created a unique bond between the show's narrative and its behind-the-scenes dynamics. Yet, the origins of Galactica 1980 were far from its eventual fate. Initially conceived as a more conventional and dramatic continuation of the original Battlestar Galactica, the show's trajectory took an unforeseen detour. A limited budget imposed creative constraints, but it was the network's decision to relegate the series to a family-friendly, educational time slot that caused the most seismic shift in the show's direction. With the universe of possibilities suddenly narrowed, the series underwent a dramatic overhaul to accommodate the new parameters, resulting in a significant departure from its initial vision. In the pantheon of television history, Galactica 1980 remains a cautionary tale of the tumultuous intersection between creative aspirations, budgetary constraints, and network demands. While the show's legacy may be marred by its shortcomings, the return of Starbuck shines as a testament to the resilience of a dedicated fan base and the unexpected twists that even the most carefully laid plans can take. Can take, can take. As we bid adieu to the dazzling cosmos of Galactica 1980, we find ourselves not merely witnesses to a captivating sci-fi series, but fellow travelers through time and space. This show, with its endearing blend of retro-futuristic charm and intergalactic intrigue, has woven itself into the tapestry of our own personal narratives. As we reflect on the heroic endeavors of Commander Adama, the indomitable spirit of the colonial refugees, and the quest for a new home among the stars, we can't help but marvel at the resonance it has held across generations. Just as our favorite characters embarked on a journey that transcended the limits of space, so too have we embarked on our own journeys of growth, change, and discovery. Galactica 1980 serves as a timeless reminder that, while the stars may be distant, the stories that connect us are anything but. It beckons us to contemplate the depths of our own aspirations and the limitless potential of the human spirit. The series may have reached its conclusion, but its impact continues to ripple through the fabric of our thoughts and dreams. What were the moments that ignited your imagination? The characters that inspired you to push beyond your boundaries? As we part ways with this stellar odyssey, we invite you to share your most cherished memories, musings, and insights. Your unique perspective enriches the legacy of Galactica 1980 and adds a vibrant hue to the universe it crafted. Thank you for journeying through the cosmos with us, for lending your imagination to the saga, and for celebrating the unending quest for knowledge and connection that Galactica 1980 embodies. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated. In the grand tapestry of space and time, your voice matters. Let it be heard.